today we're going to uh, take a look at uh, the cell division essential skills. So this is Mr. Morrison, and we're doing cell division essential skills uh, as an example for you to follow. So first of all, starting off with the purpose of mitosis. Mitosis is cell division, and it results in the formation of identical body cells uh, for the purpose of growth to make your body larger from when you're a baby and on and also to repair or replace lost cells when you get injured etc and so forth. The purpose of meiosis on the other hand is cell division uh, which results not in identical cells, but in haploid gametes, they're called. Uh, I spelled that wrong. Gametes, uh, which are uh, sperm, egg cells, uh, or in the case of plants, pollen. Uh, that's for sexual reproduction. That only happens in the testes in the ovaries as opposed to mitosis which can happen anywhere in the body. So on the bottom we have our two processes, mitosis or meiosis. And since mitosis involves two divisions and results in haploid sac cells, it's on the right. And since mitosis only involves one division and results in identical cells, you can see that these cells are identical to the original. And these cells are haploid, half of the original. This one over here must be mitosis. And the one on the right must also be meiosis. So uh, we start off right here at the beginning. We show these arrows aside and what is happening there. DNA is being copied. After the DNA is copied, you have your chromosomes that are copied here, sister chromatids. They line up in the middle in a phase we called uh, metaphase. And during this phase, we will see sisters splitting to make our identical cells. In this one, it's not metaphase. It's called metaphase one. Uh, because there are two divisions, and this one is called metaphase 2. So we have metaphase of mitosis, and over here we have metaphase 1 of meiosis. Um, pretty important question, which one of these shows pairs splitting? Well, this is sister split, what we, which we said. This one is the pairs that are splitting, so we're going to take this, and we're going to bring it over there, and we're going to circle that one to show that that one is showing that um, that's where pairs are splitting. Okay. So our result, as you can see here, is uh, haploid sex cells uh, versus identical body cells. All right, which leads us down to the table at the bottom. And we're looking at this cell here versus this cell here. And what's being produced is the cell identical to the parent. Yes, this one is identical to the parent cell. Is this one identical to the parent cell? No, it is half. So the parent cell had four chromosomes. This one also has four chromosomes. This cell had only two chromosomes. It is half of what it was. If it was a human in this cell, there would be 46 chromosomes. And in a sex cell, the sperm of the egg, there would only be 23 chromosomes in this case. So we use the terminology diploid to say that this is the 2N um, version. And that means that we have pairs of all of our chromosomes. 23 pairs of chromosomes gives us 46. These ones are pairs here and pairs here, too small and too big. In a human, it would be 46 versus 23. So we call this haploid, which is half of the cells, and we call this one simply N, which means half of the chromosomes are present, 23 in humans. Now, to continue the example, if this was an earthworm, if the skin cell of an earthworm had 20 chromosomes, right, then how many chromosomes would be present in one of its diploid somatic or body cells? That's what somatic means. Then there would also be 20 chromosomes. In the case of uh, a haploid sex cell, which would be a sperm or an egg in an earthworm, they would only have half of them, and so there'd be 10 following the idea that mitosis makes haploid sex cells. And that is the end of your essential skills. Uh, shouldn't take you very long. Hopefully, uh, you'll get 100% on it.